Hi there, and welcome to All Knit If I Want To. I'm Andrea Murray of Drea Renee Knits, and let's chat. Let's chat about some knitting and some spinning, and we're going to talk about some needles again today, and let's get started. I am wearing my Shifty, my original Shifty, with my Horfrost shawl today. I just felt like getting a little extra cozy. I went in a big, big, long walk this morning that was so delightful all along the water. I feel very lucky that I have such a long stretch of water I can walk along. Um, but it was pretty, it was pretty chilly. So I warmed up with a shower, but I feel like I'm still, still warming up. So um, anyways, I'm just going to grab this because we're going to need it in a second. Whoop. All right, so let's get started. I have some easy questions today and I have some hard questions today. So wish me luck. Uh, let's start with number one. Can you tell us, this one easy ones, can you tell us about that gorgeous yellow and gray yarn on the wall behind you? I've been wondering about it for weeks. So this is the yarn they're referring to and I even thought ahead and grabbed a skein of each to bring over. Um, and I had to answer this one today because I've actually gotten quite a few people being like, especially the yellow yarn, they're like, what is that yellow yarn? So I'm sorry I've been holding out on you. I'm ready to tell you. Um, this is my most ideal yellow color. I mean, how beautiful that is. I love this yellow. So this is from The Wandering Flock and it is their alpaca merino mix so it has 50 percent extra fine merino which their merino if you've not experienced it is unbelievable it is so soft and then they mixed it with 30 percent baby alpaca so even softer even more drape and there's some nylon in here as well um to add some strength so you could potentially use this for socks but i have other plans um, but yeah, it's beautiful and it actually, I don't know if you can see, but it has this beautiful little halo from the alpaca in there. Oof, love it. And then I think what you're referring to as the gray yarn must be this one. It's actually more of a beige. You can kind of see that. Um, so this is Magpie Fibers Nest Sport and um, this is a 100% Coriadale yarn. And the colorway of this is Castaway. Did I already say that? I don't think so. And it's more of a beige, I would say, like a, a grayish, a brownish gray. Y'all, I, so again, that walk was long and it kind of made me a little tired today. I'm a little low energy, so bear with me. I might get a little like, oh, I just wanna stare out the window. Uh, but yeah, this also has plans. This is going to be with something else, another yarn that's actually back there on that shelf, but I only grabbed this one. Um, so those are for some future future patterns that I am about ready to get started on as I finish up this year's. I have my final pattern release is a week from next Tuesday last one for 2022, which is really exciting. It's like, wow, I was looking back at how many patterns I've released since I started. So I just, right now, I should look at the exact date. I'm right at the eight year mark of doing this, of, of Drea Renee Knits. So um, I peeked the other day, I was like, how many patterns have I published? Which is funny because right now, do you think I could recall that number? Nope, <laughs> but it was a lot. And it was like, wow, I think I did the, like, what would that have been per year? And it was a lot of patterns every year. So it's kind of fun to reflect on that as we get near the close of 2022. All right, so that was the yarn. Next question, I am gonna take a little sip of this. Mm. I would love if you, this is my other easy one. I should have staggered these. So I went like easy, hard, easy, hard. All right, I would love if you, I would love if you to give, if you could give us a view of your needle storage case and how you organize them. You've spoken often how much you love your case, but we only see the outside. 
So I have opened it in the past, but I will do a more thorough showing of my needle case. Make sure I'm not gonna open this upside down. So this is the Maxwell from Magpie Fibers. If y'all have watched, you have seen this on here before. I have shown it quite a few times. Um, but this is what it looks like when you open it up. So I love that it has this flap to kind of go over and keep your needles in. Boop. And I have this like little sun glare coming in, but I kind of love it. It's just kind of dreamy, matches how I feel right now. So um, I organized mine by size from smaller to bigger, which is really what the case sets you up for. You can see you have these tiny pockets and then you get into some big boys down there. Um, and so that is what my first row is all of those. My back row, oh yeah, that's just more. So you can tell I'm definitely a like two to maybe an eight needle tip user. Um, I don't use a ton of my larger needles very often. I definitely kind of use this half more. So I have quite a few of these tips because I'll use, I always have multiple projects going. So some of these in this second row, it does have two rows, have needles back here as well, if you can kind of see that. And then in these pockets, so there's pockets all along here. It's like if, if this wasn't forward facing, I could zoom in, but it is so I can't. <laughs> I'll have to zoom in the old fashioned way like this. Okay, so in these little pockets are basically my um, shorties and sock sets that I've shown y'all before. All of a sudden, oh my gosh. All the past few days, I'm like, why this keeps happening? Drives me nuts. And I just realized that my this is not interesting <laughs> yeah you, you already have that moment when you're like oh i'm telling a really uninteresting story <laughs> that was me just now i just realized why that was happening and i will fix that later so my little like shorty sets i keep in one of these little pockets my Oh, that's my other shorty set. So I do have two shorty sets because I have them. The first is like for a zero through three, and then the second goes from four to eight. Um, so I have my shorty sets up there, and then I also have my sock set in another pocket. I have some fixed needles that I use specifically for socks. And then, um, so that was all up in my third row here. Boop, 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 all these big pockets. And then there's two really big pockets back here. And that's just all cords for me. So lots of cords. And apparently a couple of fixed needles from the um, last time I did not organize this properly. I always carry a couple crochet hooks because you just never know when you want to make a perky bobble or fix something or crochet. <laughs> and then there is this zipper pouch, which I love. So in here is where I always have usually some stitch holders, row counter, my little rubber pad, that I attach my needle tips with, T-pins, the little ends to my cords if I need to put something on hold, all that good stuff. There's also things in here that I've never once used like this, little gauge ruler, definitely never used this. Probably don't need it in there, but now that I've set it, I, if I got rid of it, I would all of a sudden need one. You know how that goes. So yeah, that is how I organize my needle case which is the Maxwell. I have a lot of needles. I do a lot of knitting. Um, so I love it. It serves all my purposes. And I highly recommend it. <laughs> okay. Close that up. Oh, I lost my shawl. I'm wiggling too much. Okay. So question number three. Let's see if I can get that back up there without everything dropping. 
I have just purchased your Andrea Cardigan pattern. Thank you. So the Andrea Cardigan is a sweater I released in La Bienname's debut book, Worsted, which is the yellow books up there. And I just had the rights returned to me this past week. So the pattern is now available for independent purchase if you want to snag just that pattern. The whole book's pretty beautiful. There are so many amazing designs in there. Really, really talented designers. I feel very lucky to have been able to be part of that project because some of the work in there that other designers did is just brilliant. So definitely check out the whole book if you're interested in that. Um, but you can also get my pattern individually now. And the rest of this question is, I have very precious Gotland yarn, and when I saw the pattern was available to purchase, I thought that's perfect. Now, I have about 1,050 yards, and which is comes in at 690 grams, which based on yardage, I don't have... I don't have quite enough, but based on grams, I do. My question is, based on gauge, if you use a larger needle, will you use less yarn versus a smaller needle? I'm thinking if I do a slightly larger gauge and at the small size, I would have enough, but I don't know if I'm thinking about this correctly. So I'm actually gonna grab the book. make sure one's in French. Sadly, I do not speak French. I would like to. I would like to learn someday. Okay, so this is the book. This is Worsted. And here is my pattern. So this is the Andrea cardigan. They named it. <laughs> And here's the one I made. I made it in blue. So I just wanted to peek at these yarn specs before I start trying to give you advice. So the yarn I used, let's look at its breakdown, is 250 yards for 100 grams. And you're using... I need a calculator and it's on my phone. Let me grab a little scratch pad here. Okay. So this one is, gotta do it again, 250 at 100 grams. And yours, they have 690 grams and they have 1,050 yards. So I have a few thoughts on this. Um, in general, I do really recommend sticking close to what, oops, sorry. The yarn that a pattern it calls for, trying to get the same correct gauge and things like that. So I just want to take a little peek here at your breakdown. So we have 2.5 and yours is going to be, oh, I see. Sorry, everybody. You get to sit here and watch me slowly do some math. <laughs> so that's a pretty big difference. The yarn I used comes in at about two and a half yards per one gram. Yours comes in at one and a half yards per one gram. So I'm wondering if your yarn is maybe more of an Aran weight, like a little bit bulkier. Um, but it's hard to say because the thing is that it also just depends on how it was spun. So you can have a woolen yarn, which is gonna have a much lighter weight for the same amount of yardage that a worsted spun yarn would come in at. So I would be curious to know if your Gotland is a worsted weight yarn. Um, the yarn I used was a worsted weight, and here I'm talking about the weight, not the spin. Um, but the one I used was also worsted spun. So um, I do wonder. Yeah, 
Sorry, I'm going to do one more quick little calculation. Yeah. Basically, the reason I broke it down into yards per gram is just so I can have like a clearer picture of the yarn you're using without being able to like see it in person and everything. Um, so for one skein of the yarn I used, I would have 250 yards for one skein, if it was a 100 gram skein, for one skein of the yarn you would like to use, that's only 150 grams. Um, so now let's look at yardage requirement. Yeah. Um, so, okay, here's what I would do. Now that you've all sat there and let me kind of mull this over and do some math. I have a couple recommendations. You can absolutely knit a gauge swatch and see where that gets you. Can you achieve gauge on your larger needles? Um, do you like the fabric it makes at a larger gauge? And thinking about in this pattern, you do have a stitch pattern you're trying to achieve. It has these um, like twisted kind of cable stitches that create these diamond shapes and there's some bobbles in there. So you do want to think about, okay, if you're kind of messing around with the gauge of the fabric, what is that going to do to that motif? Is it going to elongate it? Is it going to shorten it? In your case, it sounds like it would elongate it. Um, so if you are comfortable with kind of having things be on the fly and maybe modifying as you go if you need to, if, if you're comfortable experimenting, then you could try it. But I wouldn't feel comfortable recommending that anybody use a different weight yarn although your yarn could be worsted weight. And again, it could be the spin that is causing such a difference in yardage versus weight, like physical weight grams. Um, but to have such a different yarn that now you're gonna try and use a very different needle size to achieve actually a different gauge in hopes that you can end up with the size you want by knitting then a different size in the pattern. You're just leaving a lot up in the air unless you are comfortable really doing that math and kind of seeing, okay, where's that gonna get you? Um, so what I would recommend doing if you're like, I have my heart set on this combination of this yarn and that sweater, I would look at, could you get any more of that yarn? You know, sometimes you can go on Ravelry and people will list their stash and sometimes you can snag some. You could try um, putting out a little call on Instagram. You could try contacting the yarn maker, seeing if you couldn't get one more skein or what you might need to achieve the sweater you really truly want. Um, another option would be to crop it. So Amy, the my friend who actually made the book i designed that sweater with her in mind and i does it have the length on here how long did i do yeah so that body length is 13 inches for me that's a pretty long sweater um and for her, she really loves a cropped sweater to wear, to layer over like tunics and dresses. So she ended up cropping hers quite a bit. And so that is an option too. You would actually take out length after you do the whole hem with the stitch pattern and then just knit to a shorter distance before you separate for the arms. The only thing to keep in consideration there is depending on how busty you are, this pattern does have pockets. And so sometimes you kind of end up with like the boob pocket thing where the pockets are right by your boobs. Um, so just keep that in mind. But that would be an option. And actually if I knit that sweater again in the future, I would crop it because I think I would also wear it a whole bunch. Um, cropped because I think it does layer beautifully. It's an open cardigan. So I think it looks really nice like that. Actually in this picture, this one must be Amy's that they used on the model um, because I do not think that is a 13 inch from underarm body length. I think that's her shorter one compared to do, 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 do. this one. You can see hits lower on the hip. 
So there are some options for you to think about. I, I definitely think I am somebody who sometimes likes that challenge of being like, I am going to go off script and see if I can achieve what I want using what I want. I have done that for a sweater before. Before I actually ever started as designing, there was a very specific yarn I wanted to use for a very specific sweater, but I knew I couldn't get the correct gauge because they were two different weights. And I ended up basically coming up with the gauge I wanted to use and did the math and rewrote the pattern to work with that. But you might just want to be able to knit the pattern and not have to do all that work. So, um, you know, just do what is fun for you. If it's fun for you to play around with trying it out and experimenting it, then do it. I mean, the worst that happens is it doesn't work out and you unravel that yarn. You know, you're not going to lose the yarn. You're not cutting into fabric. You know, it's the great part about being a knitter is we can try again. So definitely keep us in the loop with what you decide. All right. Oh, okay. Um, and so this was a lot of like the ones that like I kind of get all the time, but sometimes I don't know if they're like a long enough like thing for me to answer. And today I was like, you know what? I am doing it. We get these questions all the time and I should answer. So this is another one of those. Hi, Andrea. Um, I'm curious about your sock blocker. So y'all can see my sock blockers right there. I've seen on your wall. It looks wooden with heart cutouts. Where did you get that? Is it still available? I've started looking into getting one now that I've started working on your curio socks and plan to cast on your bare paw and DRK everyday socks as well. I've seen the metal ones and wood ones with prices varying quite a bit. Have you noticed a difference in materials for them and have recommendations to a first time sock blocker buyer? <laughs> so I am very happy with those. I also have mitten ones. You can see they're hanging up there. Turns out I don't knit a lot of mittens. So those ones do not get as much use, but they have the same cute heart kind of cut out of them. I just found them on Etsy. Um, it was years ago. I don't have the name of that shop, um, but definitely look on Etsy for sock blockers and you will see all kinds, all kinds, plastic, metal, wood, different shape cutouts. Um, they were a little bit of an investment. Um, and to be honest, I use them for the first time I block a sock and then that's it. Typically, unless for some reason I'm going to show socks on here or something, and I want them to be pretty when I hold them up, um, especially because I knit a lot of ribbed socks and those compress, so they don't look very nice. I just holding them up unless they've kind of been stretched to show the shape of the sock. Um, so, but I don't think you have to have sock blockers. I've said this before. I do like them. I like when my socks look all pretty after drying, but I wear hand knit socks pretty much every day for 75% of the year. And so I wash them in our laundry sink and then I just squeeze them out and hang them to dry on a bar. So really the sock blockers are for the few times that they get to look pretty. Um, but I don't have any recommendations on other brands or anything like that. But if anybody else listening is an avid sock knitter and loves their sock blockers, there is part of me that was like, I would love to find maybe inexpensive ones that have the little hanger top where I could actually hang those in my laundry room <laughs> and then all my pairs could be pretty all the time. Uh, but I don't, it's not a need, you know. Uh, but anyways, if anyone has any tips on sock blockers, please share them below. All right. Okay, this is a really interesting one. So, sometimes I knit cardigans. I find, oh, I'm just going to do one more little sip of water. Just misreading things. I should have made my coffee. That would have been wise. But now that I just thought of it, now I'm looking forward to it, which is just as good. Okay. So, you know what? Not to go on a little side tangent here, but can I just say, and this is a personal thing, but I don't understand how people can work out with their hair down. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a lot of my life. I have wondered this. You know, there's always, always 
somebody at the gym or running and they'll have long hair and it's down. And every time I think, are you so hot? <laughs> like, how is that comfortable? I also say this as somebody who like this, you guys probably rarely see me with my hair down. I generally do wear my hair up. It's just how I feel. It just feels so good. It's just like, ugh. I have this really big, obnoxious, pink, fluffy scrunchie that I've been tying my hair up with lately. And it is just, the second I do that, it's like putting on your soft pants and your slippers. It just feels so nice <laughs> to get my hair up and off. Um, so I'm always so curious <laughs> about people who can work out with their hair down. Because I even just this morning was going on a walk. And as I mentioned, now three times. But I wore my hair down because I had my hat on. And I was like, oh, I'm just going on a walk. I'm not going on a run. I don't need to braid it. Like, I'll just wear it down. And by the end, the whole time, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so uncomfortable. <laughs> Get us off my neck. So anyways, that's Andrea's tangent for today. And now I will return to the reason we are all here, which is to answer a knitting question. So when I knit cardigans, sometimes... I find myself not liking the final outcome because the opening of the cardigan where the button placket is located is longer than the rest of the knit. If I wear the cardigan without the buttons on, the two edges of the opening near my waist will be the lowest part of the cardigan where the back of the cardigan will be shorter. Is there a way of fixing? Why does the garment end up like that? Um, I totally know what you're talking about. It is common. And I think I have a couple fixes for you. So number one, that to me could also mean that the button bands are too long. There's too many stitches. So if it's a picked up button band, pick up less. If it's sewn on button band, do it shorter. Um, because that is what is pushing that fabric down is the button band. Um, sometimes I don't mind. You also have to think, it also depends on the type of collar. So you had mentioned button bands, but that definitely will happen with like a shawl collar sweater a lot. And that's basically because you have your sweater and then you are attaching a whole other rectangle of fabric to that. And so that extra length as gravity is just going to pull that down as it relaxes. So a lot of times with a shawl collar sweater, that can be pretty common. Um, but try picking up less stitches or doing a shorter button band that you might seam on. And I think that would help. Another option would be to add some short rows to the bottom back hem. And that can be super cute to have a little drop hem to any sweater. But um, I think that would work for your cardigan as well. So you would just work some short rows to lengthen the back without adding that length to the front. So that is another option you could try. All right. I did throw in, I was worried that this was going to be such like a shorty McShorty because I had those three easy questions of like, what's this and that? Uh, so I did throw a sixth one in here, although apparently I've been chatty and made you all watch my slow math. So, <laughs> but I'm still going to do the sixth one. So since you've been chatting about the weekender a lot lately, I thought of a question. I've knit one weekender already and I'm planning on casting another soon. On my first one, I noticed the neckline pulls up at the front. I think that's because of my specific body proportions. It's not. Um, I've knit one other drop shoulder sweater and the same thing happened. For my second weekender, I'd love to know if it is possible to lower the front neckline slightly to account for this so that the edge doesn't sit up so high up on my neck. I'm not sure how I'd adjust the pattern. So when I said it's not necessarily like your body, the Weekender is a boat neck sweater. So it literally is the same height, both. It's just an, like an envelope opening for the neck. Um, I, as you can tell, I like a higher neckline. I think I might be a little rare in that. I think a lot of people like, they don't like anything near their neck. Um, I tend to like a little bit, I don't, I don't like necessarily how like scoop necks and things like that look on me so i i do tend to prefer like a crew neck and i like a boat neck but i can totally understand like 
especially you want it to be comfortable. So I have a couple ideas for you as well. Number one would be what you can do. So in the weekend or you do work short rows, but the short rows are really more about the shoulder shaping. So they are helping to mimic the slope of our shoulders. And that's kind of the point of the short rows in the weekender. What you could do is build up that back neck more than the front neck so that the back neck is higher, which will help lower the front neck when you wear it. I am just trying to think of how, so realistically, I would just work more short rows in the back than in the front. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking. I will say it's getting a little toasty in here, actually. I have my heat on. I'm finally warm. <laughs> um, I do think due to the shape of that neck, because it is cut straight across, you are always it's always going to be a little bit higher. So my other idea would actually to ch be to check out the daily. So the daily was a sweater I designed basically for people who really liked the weekender, but they don't necessarily like a boat neck or want to wear a boat neck. Um, so the daily is a crew neck sweater. You could also check out pink fizz. That's also a crew neck drop shoulder. And so those are going to have actual front neck shaping to kind of round that out and help with that um, so that you're not feeling like it's just going straight across or riding up on you. Um, so maybe check out those styles because they would be similar to the weekender. And since you already have a weekender, um, they might be a nice option for a similar style with a more comfortable neck for you. Um, okay, so let me grab, I do have some show and tell. So I showed everyone I did the little bonus video this week, <laughs> which thank you so much for humoring me and my spinning journey for the weekender spin it to knit it knit along. So I had made a bat and it was so fun, I will say. And I can't remember if I said the whole breakdown of the composition of the bat, but it is a south down silk. What else is in here? Might be merino. No, nope. South down Shetland in silk was the base. And then to that, I added in Cormo and a little alpaca. I did share this. I did share this in that video. And then some recycled sari silk. And then I also, you can see there's a lot of different fun little tweety bits. So that is the sari silk. And then it's also a bit of fun fluff from a hedgehog fibers fiber pack that I had gotten. Just grab it. So I had ordered one of their fun packs and I just feel like these are great. You could spin this straight for like such a fun, colorful yarn. But I also love it as like a grab bag of fun mix-ins for something like making bats. So this is where I got my other little Tweety bits from. So you can see there are like neps in here of all different colors. And I just loved the color that it added and it's so subtle. So I took something quite bright and fun, but created a really neutral yarn with it. So I think that's where I've landed is that I want this sweater to be more neutral than what I was spinning before. So just in case you didn't watch my little bonus video earlier this week, this is what my bat looks like. And I love it so much that I have a mountain of bats sitting in front of me. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I have three more downstairs and I already spun one um surprisingly they, they're not huge bats I know they look kind of big but that's just because they're fluffy um I actually don't think I'll have quite enough fiber so I've already contacted Casey at Port Fiber it was like do you have any more south down because I don't think I'm gonna have enough for the sweater but here's my first bobbin it's not quite full but I did pull it off my wheel just so you could see how it's spinning up 
and I am just so tickled with it. I'm really, really excited. Uh, so I will show you more as I'm able to ply up a sample and swatch it and all that good stuff. I hope to show you more um, maybe next week. We'll see. I'm prepping for my trip out to Portland, Oregon to teach some new classes. So I'm very excited about that. I'm a little nervous. It's always a little, a little nerve wracking to teach and even more so when you're teaching new classes, but they're about things I love. So I, I think it's going to be good. One of them is actually based on this. I don't know if I want to, where I was like, how fun would it be if we could have more people come in um, than can usually fit into one of my classes and we could do like a live version of this and I could do demos and answer questions. So I'm very excited. Um, oh, sock knit along. I can't believe I haven't talked about that. So sock knit along is in full swing and y'all are doing such an amazing job. I am so excited to see everyone's finished socks. So um, I will put the Ravelry forum below as well as the Instagram hashtags. But this year we're doing the Bear Paw socks or my DRK Everyday socks. And I think it's going to be one of our best ever. So, so exciting. Um, some great, great prizes from The Knitted Bliss who has these really cute embroidery kits that are very like knitter centric. And also Candace from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers threw in some prizes, including a year subscription to Sock Squad, which if you haven't checked out that before, it is so much fun. You get um, sock yarn throughout the year, which is actually where the sock yarn base for the new socks bear paw came from. It used to only be part of the sock club, but everyone loved it so much that they made it part of their permanent line. So anyways, that is going on and is always one of my favorite times of year to just watch everyone try to bust out a new hand knit in a weekend. It's really fun. So if you are participating in that, I will see you over in the forums or on Instagram. And I hope everyone has a lovely weekend. I hope you get to make something. I am also in the midst of baking, I think one of my first pies I've made since I was a baker. So I'm finally attempting a gluten-free pie crust that I am really hoping will be good. <laughs> pie crust used to, when I was a baker, pie crust was one of my specialties. Like I, I don't know why, but me and pie crust, we just got along. Like I actually gave myself carpal tunnel in pie crust because I'd make these giant batches of it. I would make pop tarts, homemade pop tarts and all these fun things at the bakery and um, I used to love it. I used to make giant like thir times 13 batches of pie crust and now I haven't done it in years. So I just prepped the pie crust last night and it felt really similar to my gluten-y days. And so I'll let y'all know how that goes. If it goes well, maybe I'll share the recipe, um, a recipe link in my next newsletter. So, all right. I think that's it. And thank you all for coming here and hanging out with me every Friday. It really means a lot. I looked today and there's even more questions than usual. So y'all have been thinking of lots of good questions and I'm just so grateful for every single one of you who spends your morning with me or whatever time of day you watch this. But I hope to see you back next week and go make something. Bye.